This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Mount Calvary. A special welcome to the guests that are with us today, especially if you have brought your children from our elementary school to sing. We are really grateful for that and for your presence here today and pray that God will bless all of us by his word. Incorporated into our worship today is a celebration of the Lord's Supper and this is something, as many of you know, that Christians do both to receive something very, very special from God and to confess a shared faith amongst themselves. And for that reason, we really ask our visitors to take an opportunity to speak with our pastors and to see where God's Word unites us in what God has to say about that supper and about our Christian faith. We are in a time that's called a middle time, so we have looked at the words and the works of Jesus and we're coming up on the end of the Christian church year and today we're going to have kind of a, a separate service that deals with something that is very, very near to us and very, very important to us and that is our interaction with human government, especially the government under which we find ourselves and the way that we can praise God by the way that we submit to the government that is placed over us. We will begin with the opening song, Let Us Worship the Lord. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord God Almighty, what you say in the fourth commandment is plain. Honor your father and mother, that it may go well with you, 
and that you may enjoy long life on the earth. You instruct us to honor our leaders at home, at church, and in government, because those people are your servants, established by you for our good. Everyone must submit himself to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Consequently, he who rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted, and those who do so will bring judgment on themselves. So today, Lord, we confess our sins against your gifts of authority, sins of disobedience and disrespect toward those you have placed over us, sins of not supporting those you have placed over us, sins of shirking our own responsibilities as parents and leaders. We ask you to forgive us, Lord, for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions, wash away all my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. Our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent his only Son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated to praise God for the forgiveness that is ours in Jesus. We will listen as the children from our elementary school in grades 6 through 8 sing all praise to him.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, our God, so govern the nations on earth and direct the affairs of this world that your church may worship you in peace and joy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. First reading from God's Word today is taken from the Old Testament, the book of Daniel, chapter 1. Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah were young Jewish noble men. They were the cream of the crop, the kind of men that mothers would be looking at as future husbands for their daughters. Wonderful, responsible, godly men who found themselves in a foreign land under an ungodly, a wicked government. And yet they furnish us a beautiful example as people living today, even in 21st century America, of how to keep the first things first and how to please God in the way that we live. Their first priority was their worship of the Lord and listening to his word and obeying him, but that flowed into a beautiful example of respectfully submitting to the government under which they found themselves. Then the king ordered Ashpenaz, chief of his court officials, to bring into the king's service some of the Israelites from the royal family and the nobility, young men without any physical defect, handsome, showing aptitude for every kind of learning, well-informed, quick to understand, and qualified to serve in the king's palace. He was to teach them the language and literature of the Babylonians. The king assigned them a daily amount of food and wine from the king's table. They were to be trained for three years, and after that, they were to enter into the king's service. Among those who were chosen were some from Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. The chief official gave them new names. To Daniel, the name Belteshazzar. To Hananiah, Shadrach. To Mishael, Meshach and to Azariah, Abednego. But Daniel resolved not to defile himself with the royal food and wine, and he asked the chief official for permission not to defile himself this way. Now God had caused the official to show favor and compassion to Daniel, but the official told Daniel, I am afraid of my lord the king who has assigned your food and drink. Why should he see you looking worse than the other young men your age? The king would then have my head because of you. Daniel then said to the guard whom the chief official had appointed over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, Please, test your servants for ten days. Give us nothing but vegetables to eat and water to drink. Then compare our appearance with that of the young men who eat the royal food and treat your servants in accordance with what you see. So he agreed to this and tested them for 10 days. At the end of the 10 days, they looked healthier and better nourished than any of the young men who ate the royal food. So the guard took away their choice food and the wine they were to drink and gave them vegetables instead. To these four young men, God gave knowledge and understanding of all kinds of literature and learning. And Daniel could understand visions and dreams of all kinds. At the end of the time set by the king to bring them into the service, the chief official presented them to Nebuchadnezzar. The king talked with them, and he found none equal to Daniel, Hananiah, 
Mishael and Azariah. So they entered the king's service. In every matter of wisdom and understanding about which the king questioned them, he found them ten times better than all magicians and enchanters in his whole kingdom. And Daniel remained there until the first year of King Cyrus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Second reading is recorded in a letter that was written by the Apostle Paul to Christians living in Rome, and his words will serve as the basis for this morning's sermon. Let everyone be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Consequently, Whoever rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted, and those who do so will bring judgment on themselves. For rulers hold no terror for those who do right, but for those who do wrong. Do you want to be free from fear of the one in authority? Then do what is right, and you will be commended. For the one in authority is God's servant, for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for rulers do not bear the sword for no reason. They are God's servants, agents of wrath to bring punishment on the wrongdoer. Therefore, it is necessary to submit to the authorities, not only because of possible punishment, but also as a matter of conscience. This is also why you pay taxes. For the authorities are God's servants, who give their full time to governing. Give to everyone what you owe them. If you owe taxes, pay taxes. If revenue, then revenue. If respect, then respect. If honor, then honor. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Alleluia, in Christ you have been brought to fullness. He is the head over every power and authority. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel is recorded in Matthew chapter 22, beginning with verse 15. The enemies of Jesus were always trying to trip him up, and in this case, in his thinking about and his teaching on the role of government. And masterfully Jesus answers them and he also gives to his people their marching orders when it comes to their relationship with God and their relationship with government. Then the Pharisees went out and laid plans to trap him in his words. They sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians. Teacher, they said, we know that you are a man of integrity and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. You aren't swayed by others because you pay no attention to who they are. Tell us then, what is your opinion? Is it right to pay the imperial tax to Caesar or not? But Jesus, knowing their evil intent, said, you hypocrites, why are you trying to trap me? Show me the coin used for paying the tax. They brought him a denarius, and he asked them, whose image is this, and whose inscription? Caesar's, they replied. Then he said to them, so give back to Caesar's what is Caesar's, and to God what is God's. When they heard this, they were amazed. So they left him and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Please be seated.
God's richest grace and mercy and peace are showered upon you each and every day because of our Lord and Savior from sin, Jesus Christ. The word of God that is before us this morning is taken from Paul's letter to the church in Rome in chapter 13, where we heard Paul tell God's people this. He said, Everyone must submit himself to the governing authorities. There is no authority that exists except that which God has established. My brothers and sisters in Christ, authority, government, Just the mere mention of those words. You know what's happening right now? Our blood pressure is starting to go up. We feel our teeth begin to clench. Scowl is on our face. Our mind. Our mind is beginning to fill up with all of these unpleasant thoughts. Authority. Government. You know, as hard as it is for us to hear those words, there's another word that we have failed to mention, and it's this one. Respect. Oh no, now you've done it, Pastor. Respect God's servants, the governing authorities? Oh, I knew it. I knew a sermon like this was coming. It was long overdue. We haven't talked about this for a while. I just should have stayed in bed this morning. Well, now, before we just get too bent out of shape, let's hear these words. Everyone must submit himself to the governing authorities. There is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Respecting governmental authority certainly hard to hear. And, and, and words we, we instantly want to rebel against. But look at these words again. You know, this authority, government, it all has been established by God. And the reason that that authority and government has been established by God is because of, of this truth. Where we hear that all authority, every single last ounce, every single last bit of authority in heaven and earth belongs to him. This passage is saying that God, God is the source of all authority. Do you realize that without God, authority would cease to exist. There would be no authority. If there was no God, there would be no authority. And so we see that government authority is yet another blessing that is showered down upon us from our God. Because without it, without authority, this world would fall into anarchy and absolute disarray and disorder. And while our God has established governmental authority for our good, he has also given us great freedom. He has given mankind great freedom on what that authority should look like. What I mean is this, is that there is not one divinely appointed form of authority. God has not established socialism, communism, tribalism, or any other ism. There is no divinely appointed dictatorship or or, or monarchy. 
all of these types, all of these forms of government, God has allowed man the freedom to develop. God has established governmental authority, the, uh, the authority itself. He has left man to decide what form of authority and government should look like. Everything from, you know, we have an absolute dictator to a full democracy. Whatever form of government we find ourselves under, we are to submit. Why? Because all government, governmental authority has been established by God for our good. Absolutely everyone, no matter what form of authority you find yourself under, to our submit and show respect. Well, if God is has established this governmental authority for our good. Why is government such a dirty and distasteful word to us? And for one, take a look at yourself. You know what none of us likes? None of us likes to be told what to do. Our nature is such, such that we want to be our own authority. We want all authority in heaven and on earth to belong to me. Because because we want to really be our own God. And then there is also this. Man in his freedom that God has given in the, in the formation to form governments, well, what man has decided to do is to form, to form governments not to serve God, not for the good of the people who are under that authority, but rather for their own good. And so you know what men have done? Men have fought against their king because they want to be king. And dictators have risen up to become a dictator in order to serve their own good. But God did not establish dictators to serve their good. God established authority for the good of all. You know, I, I think when, when, when people hear these words for moments, they think, well then, you know, like God established like Hitler and Stalin and, and you know, and, and all of these horrible dictators or, or monarchies. God did not do that. God did not establish Hitler or Stalin or any other dictator, king, or government leader to serve their own good. This was man's doing. God has established government authority for good. Man has chosen to abuse that governmental authority which has been given to him. And yet what God does in his, in his providence is that he controls all of these forms of, of, of government. He causes nations to rise and fall. All to accomplish his good purpose. To have it all serve in, in, in line with his good purpose. And just because we may not like the form of government we find ourselves under at any particular time or our leaders and rulers and kings may serve their own purpose, that does not give us the right to rebel against our government. Why? 
Because the authority that has been established has been given to us by God himself. And when we rebel against authority, we are rebelling against God. It is thought that when, when Paul was inspired to write these words, that God's people, they were, they were under the, the government of Nero. And if that is true, well, then Nero was to Christians what Hitler was to the Jews. Can you imagine being a Christian under that form of government under Nero that just wanted to, to wipe every Christian out? And then, you know, Paul, you hear Paul, you know, say these words. Oh, by the way, you know, this, this government that wants to wipe you out, here's what you are to do. You are to submit yourself to the governing authorities, for there is no authority that exists except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. You talk about a punch to the gut? The government is trying to kill me, and now I'm to submit? How in all the world is that possible? Well, let's step back for a moment and consider the form of government we are under. What would God have us do with our government? That's a pretty obvious. We are to obey. And while our God has not established the form of government we are under, our God has established authority. Therefore, we are to submit. We are to submit not only for, for fear of possible punishment of what our government might do to us if we disobey the laws of the government, but we are to submit for conscience' sake. We are saints. And for conscience sake, in love for our God and the authority that he has established, we want to obey. We will obey even if it's not in our best interest to do so. We will obey even if we are convinced that what is taking place is not for the good of all the people. We will obey even if it causes us pain and suffering. We will obey and submit even if we do not get our way. And as much as that causes our ears to bleed, as much as it causes our blood pressure to rise, as much as we want to rebel, as much as we want us to tune it all out, as much as we want to disobey, we will obey in love for the one who established authority. But I can't, Pastor. I just can't. I'm too angry with authority and government. I can't obey. And you know what? You're right. You can't obey. I can't either. Not even close. But there is one who has obeyed. And there is one who did obey. The one who has obeyed is the one who has established authority. It's the one who we heard this morning say this, give to Caesar what is Caesar's and to God what is God's. The authority submitted himself to all government authority for you and me. Your conscience has been cleared by your Savior. For you are seen by the one who established authority 
as one who submits to government authority. There is now no terror for you. Even if the government that we find ourselves under desires to put us to death with the sword. That doesn't even need to hold any terror for us because you want to know the one who established authority has done. He even has authority over that thing called death. That's how far his authority extends. All authority, every last ounce, every last bit has been given to me in heaven and on earth. It all belongs to me, even authority over death itself. And so you know what? The one who has established authority will safely see you to his life that he has won for you. Therefore, for conscience' sake, in love for God, and thanks for the one who has established authority, we will submit. We will show respect. Even in the struggle that we are facing now under our current form of government that has decided, really, to throw off any and all form of authority, who doesn't want this authority principle at all, who wants every individual to be given the freedom to govern him or herself, free to do what he or she wants. You know what results in that kind of thinking, to throw off authority? The result is anarchy. Anarchy. And so then you know what we are to do for conscience' sake? We are still to obey. Only we are to obey God. And not man who is telling us to throw off authority to become your own authority. So if a government tells us to worship a false god, We say, you have no authority to do so. I will obey the one, and I will worship the one who has established authority. And if they command us to no longer preach the truth of God's word, we will say, you know what? That authority has not been given to you. I will obey the one who has established authority. And if the government declares that there is no authority anymore, we will say, you know what? Hey, have you forgotten about the one who is authority and who has established authority? And if our government makes laws that does not respect the gift of life and marriage, for conscience sake, we will say, I will obey the one who has established authority. You have not established authority. And if they say to throw off authority and believe and do and feel whatever is best for you, we will say for conscience sake we have no right to throw off authority because of the one who has established authority. with all that we are struggling with in our government, with all the struggles we have with authority, it ought to show us that these words are most certainly true. And that God knows exactly what he is talking about. Because really what I think is troubling most of us today about what is going on is we see we're going down a path that is just absolute chaos, absolute uh, disorderly, and absolute anarchy. So listen to these words again from the one who has established authority for our good. 
everyone must submit himself to the governing authorities. There is no authority that exists except that which has been established, which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Amen. Please rise. May the peace of God which surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the one who has established authority for our good, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We join now in making confession of our faith, and this morning we'll use the words from the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated for prayer. You are the Lord and there is no other. Beside you there is no God. You established authorities among us to serve for the good of all people. Empower us to live as good citizens in our world so that your name is hallowed and your will is done by us. Fill our lips with your praise as we ascribe to you all glory and strength. Let your kingdom come to others through our witness in deed and word. You have opened your hand and given an abundance of crops to supply daily bread for all. We give thanks for your goodness, which endures forever. And we thank you, especially today, on behalf of Al and Annette Godwin, who are celebrating 50, 52 years of marriage. We thank you for your good gifts to them, and we thank you for your grace to them to maintain their relationship with you and with one another over these years. And we ask that you would continue to be with them and that you would grant them more years as you will. Your son came to take our pain and bear our suffering, Give skill, wisdom, and perseverance to doctors and nurses and those who care for the physical health of others, especially for William Maddox, the grandson of Susan Semro, who is hospitalized. We ask that you would be with him, be with his parents, and with all the personnel who care for him, that he might regain his health and return to his home. You are great and most worthy of praise. All healing and strength come from you. Come all who are troubled, and heal all who are sick, that we may be glad and proclaim your praise. Faithful God, govern us by your Holy Spirit, so that we humbly serve you and fulfill the duties we owe to those in authority. Keep us mindful that we always serve you first, for you are the great King over all the earth. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The offerings of God's people will be brought forward.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all place give you thanks, O Lord. Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who promised that wherever two or three come together in his name, there he is with them to shepherd his flock until he comes again in glory. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. Blessed are you, Lord God, eternal King and gracious Father. In love you made us the crown of your creation. In mercy you planned our salvation. In grace you sent your Son to redeem us from sin. We remember and give you thanks that your eternal Son, Jesus Christ, became flesh and made his dwelling among us. That he willingly placed himself under law to redeem those under law that he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death on a cross, that he has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Bless us as we receive your son's body and blood in this sacrament. Forgive our sins, increase our faith, strengthen our fellowship, and deepen our longing for the day when Christ will welcome us to his eternal feast. Praise and thanks and honor and glory be to you, O God, our Father, and to your Son and to the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in, remem in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. As you come forward, if you are in need of a gluten-free wafer, one is available in the bottom tray. And if you are allergic or sensitive to wine, 
grape juice is in the center tray. All things are ready. The feast that the Lord has prepared for you, come forward now.
Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us with this saving gift. We pray that through it you will strengthen our faith in you and increase our love for one another. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. First off, just a reminder that this afternoon from 1 to 3 right here at Mount Calvary, we're going to be holding our trunk and treat event. That is one of like our part of our harvest strategy. And what that means is, is that for our harvest strategy to be successful, we would need all of you. So even if you do not have like a trunk and you don't really appreciate treats, you know, what would still be really important is for, for you to come and welcome people on our campus because our goal is to get them connected with Mount Calvary in order to be able to have an opportunity to one day share the message of the good news of salvation with them. And so you are Mount Calvary. We are part of the church, and it would be wonderful if you're able to, to uh, attend this event and yeah, you can probably have and have a piece of candy or two along the way. Also, what uh, I would like to do this morning is to share with you this month's edition of our Mount Calvary Minute, and that just shows of some of the things that have taken place this past month in our school. So if you just want to click to the next screen.
And then just one other announcement, and I just want to make you aware that I have reached a decision regarding the call that I was holding to Good Shepherd in Burnsville, Minnesota. I have uh, decided to decline that call, and I will say in large part it's due to all of you because I would say, like, your comments that you share with me do matter because if I ever feel like, you know, I've worn out my welcome here at Mount Calvary and my time here is, is done, well, I take that into heavy consideration. And so I would say what I'm saying is that your comments to me do matter because in large part that is what I, I base uh, decisions like, like this on. And I would say most of you, except for maybe, you know, our President Bill, um, are, are, are very, you know, they were very supportive. No, I'm just kidding. Bill wanted me to stay too. But when I hear, when I hear comments from you that, you know, you would really prefer that I stayed, well, then that tells me, I guess, I haven't worn out my welcome here after going on 11 years, and I know it probably seems like 40. But uh, I appreciate the comments that you do send my way as I'm deliberating calls. So thank you. Mount Calvary Kids will take place right here in the sanctuary, and then also we'll continue our study, The Pitfalls of Pride, downstairs in the Fellowship Hall. Pastor Westendorf will be having their Bible information class in the seventh grade room. God's blessings to you, people of God, as we continue to rejoice in the salvation that is ours from the one whom all the authority in heaven and on earth belongs to Jesus Christ our Lord. Have a wonderful week.